One of the most functional foods I know of is bone broth. And it's very underrated. People don't think about it in general when they are looking to improve their dog's bowl. We think of adding broccoli, adding um, fresh meat, adding blueberries. But adding hydration, just hydration in general, to our pet's diet is so crucial. I mean, if we think about how much water we drink in a day, and I know I've talked about water in the past and making sure that we're not drinking dead water, and there's a, there's a lot that we could talk about with just with water. But if we think about all of the animals in the world that are eating primarily a dry diet, so all of the animals that are eating kibble, that are eating a dry diet, what it takes for the body to actually be able to break down and digest whatever it can from that food source it takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of water. And more often than not, you're going to see people that feed kibble do feed it dry. They don't add hydration to it. We do, of course, always encourage having water bowls water always available to your pets. And one of the things we talk about when transitioning a pet from a dry diet to a fresh food diet that is higher in moisture is that they will drink less water in general. I know my dog does, but she still drinks some water because even when we give our pets a high moisture fresh food diet, there's still need for additional water consumption. Our bodies are primarily made of water. So our animals live in, and a lot of us humans, by the way, live in a chronic state of dehydration. This is really damaging. We see it. We can see the effects of dehydration on the body. We see it in our skin, in our face, in um, the way our skin looks all over our body, but internally, our organs are suffering. They are deprived of one of the most essential things that we can give our body, which is hydration. The same is true with our pets. We start seeing that their skin is dry. They've got dandruff, flaky, flakiness on the skin. Their fur starts to can look brittle and dull. A lot of that can be due to dehydration. So one of the most functional foods, as I started out this little intro with, is bone broth. Not just because it is hydrating, but because it is a powerhouse of nutrition and can be used to help the body heal, uh, whether that is the gut or adding additional collagen and chondroitin to the joints. But I have a very special guest for you today who is going to talk more about bone broth in particular. And we do talk about all of this. We talk about the nutrition aspect of bone broth. We talk about some of the negative things associated with bone broth that you may have seen on social media. And we also talk about the hydration portion of adding bone broth to your pet food. And I think this is not only important for those animals that do eat a dry diet or even partially dry diet, but animals that are eating a whole food or fresh food diet that are getting a lot of nutrition, um, a lot of hydration, along with the food they're eating, there is still need for additional hydration. And bone broth is an incredible way to do that. So please welcome today's guest to the Pet Parenting Reset. Flo Mason. She is the owner of Crude Carnivore. So she has a bachelor's in animal production and a master's in companion animal nutrition. She worked as a manager at a pet supply store in Illinois, which is where she lives, for many years doing lots of nutrition consults and decided to curate the first ever herb infused grass-fed, pasture-raised bone broth for both dogs and cats. So please welcome Flo to the Pet Parenting Reset. 
Flo, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so you own Crude Carnivore, and yes. I am such a huge fan of not only small business, like micro small business, because that's me too, um, but also <laughs> like women owned founded businesses. So, you know, and, and then you're putting out like a really, really good product on top of everything else, so, uh, which is really great because I'm, you know, of course, all of my listeners know, like, I just try everything, everything holistic. Let's, <laughs> let's do food first. That's my thing. Um, but I am so thankful that we were finally able to get you on um, yes. the podcast. So yay! if you um, wouldn't mind, like, introducing yourself a little bit and just letting everybody know who you are and what you do. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I see you like all over talking to all kinds of professionals. So it's really awesome to be able to come on and talk to you. Um, yeah, my name is Flo. I live in Southern Illinois and I have four dogs and too many cats. <laughs> and, um, I am uh, my first dog in college back in 2012. I found her. She was just like on the side of the road and my mom said you can't have a dog, but she's still here. Um, so yeah, then throughout the years, I just kind of collected them. They, I feel like they find me and um, yeah, I went to, I've always loved animals, but uh, I actually have a bachelor's degree in animal production out of all things, which is very interesting. Um, and then I really always wanted to do like rehabilitation um, therapy with horses and dogs, but I had an opportunity to start a master's degree in animal nutrition, and honestly, I was not even interested in that. I thought it was more boring. I had done some classes in my undergrad, so I kind of knew a little bit about it, but it was more complex, like eating rations for cows and things like that. That just didn't really settle with me very well. So, um, but yeah, so I had decided to start my master's degree, and like two months in, I found a local pet store that just opened, and I was like, if you ever need anybody, let me know. Like, I'm getting my master's degree in animal nutrition. Still totally with the direction of I'm going to go to rehabilitation for dogs and horses. And so I started there and it, like, completely changed everything. Um, I completely just derailed my plan and became, like, obsessed with trying to find the best solution um, for pet parents and their dog with sensitivities. and disease and um, just learning things about the pet industry and all of the ingredients and the different supplements and so I managed that store for about seven years and did nutrition consultations and um, and then I just kind of like during that time was really excited about um, products and I was like you know what like what what could I do and I always wanted to start a raw food at this point there wasn't really much around like the raw foods were like primal and um different types of food that that just i don't know i felt like there was a gap in the industry not to talk about on primal but like i just felt like there is definitely room for you know growth and other things and so i um i was like there's not really a bone broth well i want to start with a raw food but i was like that is way too complex so let's just start with like something simpler and so I literally got this like little crock pot. I went to a butcher, got some bones, and I thought, well, how can I make this a different broth? Um, and nobody used herbs at the time to infuse anything. And I think still to this day, there's maybe only one other company that uses only broth or only herbs to infuse their broth. And um, so, so yeah, that's kind of how that started. I started with this little crock pot and. Um, started selling at that local store and that really gave me like a huge advantage because I knew a lot of people who own stores and I went to global with that store and I really got connected with a lot of people and um, I also like just you know reach out so that's kind of how crude carnivore started and then now we are over four years old and still trying to grow it <laughs> and keep it afloat yeah that's awesome. Yeah, that's kind of like, I, I guess, about know, me and how the business started, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's a really cool story, actually. And the fact that you're using 
herbs in the in the broth because they are you know i recently had rita hogan on and i'm mm-hmm. just like becoming more and more fascinated with herbs and herbs as um i guess a me- medicine which yes i have a hard yeah. time saying that because it's like being being a, a pet health coach like i have there are certain words that i have to kind of steer clear of but like really mm-hmm. it is yeah. it's like natural medicine um and i've been into essential oils for a long time which is like mm-hmm. you know the most potent form of plant medicine yes. but um to actually use it as food or mm-hmm. it, it, it it's fascinating to me. Um, so I really, really yeah. like that. Oh, my dog is just shaking in here. I'm sorry. Um, oh, and then bone broth, <laughs> first of all. Yeah. <laughs> so bone broth, um, I, I don't know what side of social media um, you happen to be on as, as you know, people listening to this. But there's a side of social media that is just like bone broth is the most amazing thing in the world. And there's another side. Uh, of the coin where people are like, well, it's really high in histamines and maybe we don't want to, you know, it's, it's hot. So maybe we don't want to feed it to every dog. And that also is true. But I think in general, like if we, you know, because when you're making products for the public to consume, you have to kind of mm-hmm. take a generalized stance. <laughs> and in general, bone broth is an amazing product for us and for our yeah. animals. Can you talk a little bit about that? So I can understand why people may be concerned about the, you know, the the other side of it, um, thinking that, you know, um, it it's actually like a weird kind of concept. But animals store a lot in their bone marrow. So if you have an animal that is not raised properly, that has a very high stress life, that has a very, you know, a bland, non-nutritious diet, maybe an animal that stands all day, that is in confinement, that um, doesn't get blood moving and doesn't have um, the ability to live life the way that it should, then you can get into a situation where you are expressing things into that broth that are not um, actually beneficial in the end. You can actually do more harm than good. And that's why it's so important to look at sourcing and to look at where you get your bones from. And so that's something that we really focus on. And I, I have conversations and I, I have one local farmer that's like my favorite guy to work with because he has like certified humane um, certifications and he he can tell me who does what right. And so it's kind of fun. I'm always like, hey, this person reached out to me. What do you think? He's like, nah. <laughs> so um, I think it's very important to look at where do where do the bones come from? How are those animals kept because like anything if if i eat a bunch of processed food on a regular basis if i don't um care for my body then i'm not going to feel 100 percent. i'm not going to feel good and that will express in my skin in my hair in my like you know breakouts so like women have this is a huge thing right now is trying to heal your skin with your gut pretty much and i think it's the same concept like for our pets like if you're it like feeds like and if you are feeding um something from an animal that had a really stressful life that had tons of cortisol levels or high cortisol levels on a regular basis that did not get to move its body did not get to consume grass or whatever the animal needs to consume for their regular diet pigs love to live in mud and eat roots and be very um dirty and get you know really in there and root and if they live in confinement on concrete and they don't get that natural instinct behavior they're not going to be very happy and that will show up in the body that will show up in the meat in the bones and so i can see how people can be divided but i think that generally bone broth if done right is going to be extremely healing for the entire body and then of course with the herb infusion you are adding additional benefits to it so i just think that it really comes down to sourcing yeah well so bone broth like if we can kind of go back to the generalized it's a it's a superfood kind of um overarching (laughs) topic it is a superfood yeah i think and um especially you know if you're doing it right if you're getting it from and i appreciate so much that you brought that 
up like how these animals are raised because that's I, I is very important to me <clears throat> and I think it is at the end of the day really important to most people it's just not something most people think about on a day-to-day -day basis like, yeah I mean, you and I live in this world, so I think, like, when I go to grab a package, even even food that I have already vetted and I bought and it's in my freezer and I go to pull it out of my freezer to thaw it to feed it for my dog, I, for, I don't know what it is, I guess it's just how my brain works, like, I am thinking <laughs> about that food and the decisions that I made and uh, to to purchase that food and knowing that you know, these animals are humanely raised, that I'm feeding my dog grass-fed, grass-finished beef, or whatever it is. Like, these are things mm -hmm. that are important to me. And I think at the end of the day, like, if people put more thought into it, it's important to them, too. They just don't necessarily think about it. <laughs> yeah, and I also so, think that, more... yeah, marketing also plays a huge role because you can easily go to, like, Kroger, like we have Kroger, I don't know, um, but like any grocery store and it'll say like free range, antibiotic free, all these things. And it's like, first of all, poultry is not allowed to be raised with antibiotics, period, ever. So that's right. totally like a marketing tactic. And then also free range doesn't mean anything. Oh, <laughs> hi Kim. <laughs> um, and, but like free range doesn't mean anything either because just because the chicken isn't sitting in a cage doesn't mean it has more room if anything it maybe has less room because it's there's so many chickens in one space and as they grow they just fill and they sit on like a piece of paper size you know square and they can't really move and then they're over like they are fed steroids and they are you know the production is so sad and that's i honestly do not buy meat at the grocery store anymore i literally we will buy like if we are in a dire situation we will buy like the grass-fed packets of beef um but i just personally will get like i just went and picked up bones from that farmer that i was talking about and um he just gave us like a whole for our wedding he gave us like a whole pack of meat and you know chicken bacon pork like all these things and that's what I eat and I have no problem eating that but I will like I have a really hard time going to the grocery store or being at someone's house and they're serving you know burgers and I'm over here like oh my this is like <laughs> it's and you know some people think right. I'm dramatic but to me I think about that life that lived and what life they had and do I want to support that type of um industry do I want to support someone who who doesn't value the life of this being and it's really hard for me i was vegan actually for a while when i first like a couple years into the broth thing which is really hard um to maintain honestly and i honestly think that the like vegan approach is like you know it's whatever works for you but i also think that if we were to change a lot of it and look at okay but if we can source meat from farms that do it right that care about the environment, that are into regenerative farming, that are really, you know, putting a lot of time and love into what they do, then, <laughs> well, can you hear my dogs? Oh my gosh, stop. They're so crazy. Hold on. <laughs> and we can, like, support people that do it that way. We could change the entire way that we eat. And, um, you know, human wise obviously this is a product for pets that we make but um but like you said it it's also about me like i care about that so then why would i not transfer that down to my animals and you know i think people get like well it's a dog but they're not just dogs to me <laughs> so um i think that it's really important to look at you know how, what you're nourishing your body with and that to me translated into the product that we make so yeah yeah it is so so important and um i okay we're we're going to talk about bone broth in just a minute but um <laughs> so i know i'm i'm like fascinated that you said you were vegan because i was vegetarian for a, like i don't like over 10 years and it wasn't until i started transitioning my pets to a fresh food diet that i was like I really started examining what I was eating, not for 
I, I think when when I was vegetarian, it was mostly because I didn't like, you know, how the animals were treated, how they're slaughtered, mm-hmm. all of it. Like, I didn't want to support that. And I didn't know any other way to go about not supporting that. And then yeah. when I started learning about my pet's health and how they need, like, I, I really went down this road of all of these things they need in their diet, you know, cats being obligate carnivores. And I I know there's, there's like discussion on what dogs are. They are like, I, in my mind, from what I understand, from what I learned in my nutrition certification is that they're scavenger carnivores. (laughs) I Mm -hmm. just like, we're, we're we're all over the place with what dogs are, I think. But um, I think scavenger carnivores kind of, kind of sums, sums things up for them, but they need (laughs) like, all of the things their body needs and the essential amino acids that only come from meat, blah, 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 all these things. And then I'm looking at me going, no wonder I'm so sick, right? Because I'm not eating any animal products yep. and yep. I'm not getting all of these nutrients that I need. Um, and I wasn't supplementing either, which is a whole yeah. other thing. But anyway, let's go back to <laughs> bone broth being a super food. Um, and Okay, so what crude carnivore does, what you do, you're sourcing bones from animals that are raised humanely, which is wonderful, Mm -hmm. and they're eating uh, species-appropriate foods while they're alive, I assume, yes, so we Mm -hmm. know there's a lot of nutrition that can be Mm -hmm. pulled from the bones as you are cooking them down and pulling everything out of yep. the bones and the marrow. Um, the best thing, like what I know most about bone broth is how not just nutritious it is, but also how like healing it can be for the gut. But I'm sure there are so many mm-hmm. more things that you can tell me about bone broth. <laughs> yes. So we get this question all the time. I was actually answering an email like right before we jumped on um, from somebody who asked like, what's the deal with the broth? Like, which one do I pick? And I realized I need to make a guide for this because I get this question all the time. And uh, there's so much information. So sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even remember all of it, but I try. Um, So I do like to break it down. And of course we're going for, you know, collagen content is always what people think is what does it. And It is right to some extent, and people often look for like the thicker broth um, as a as a sign that it's a very powerful healing broth, Um, and that's why you see some companies that will use like potato starch or tapioca starch to thicken their broth up to make it look more like healthy. But um, those things are just like you know sugar added sugar, so you're really actually kind of going backwards. But that's a whole other conversation. but yeah, bone broth in general just has lots of glycosaminoglycans, which are pretty much the biomolecules that make up collagen. And how that works is that they get into digestion, meaning that they will not get broken down into smaller particles. They will get absorbed intact as they are to be able to be used throughout the entire body. And so... um they have like, they're like little fibroblasts and you can use them all over the body to lay down new materials. So um, in the gut, they're amazing for really clogging up leaky gut, for example. And we all have leaky gut. Every single, like our dogs do, us humans do, if, especially if you feed a, eat a lot of processed foods or feed processed foods, your dog or cat is going to struggle with this um, because there's constant um tearing in the gut and and damage happening from like those processed foods moving through the body and for those that are not 100 percent aware of what it is but pretty much i like to look at the gut as a, like a cheese cloth so if if this is like a video representation <laughs> if you're listening to it um but like if you stick your fingers together and you and you push them as close as you can together that's like a solid gut and there's tiny little holes that will be there that allow, you know, the proper particles to move through the lining of the gut. However, over time and processed food consumption and, you know, just bacterial overgrowth and damage and everything that those, that cheesecloth will stretch and larger holes will form. So if you can't see this, I'm like pulling my fingers apart and there's larger holes that'll form. That will allow larger particles like 
food particles to pass into the bloodstream. And that's not supposed to happen. And that's where you'll see a ton of inflammation because you're moving these giant particles through the bloodstream that the body's like, what is this? And so it's sending all their little like armies to that, to those particles to fight off, you know, whatever this intruder is. And what we want to try to do is heal that cheesecloth back together and make sure that those giant holes don't remain. And so that's also why like bone broth on a daily basis is so powerful because, you know, just feeding it for one week, you may do bone broth does heal within seven to 14 days. So it has a very quick healing, uh, you know, effect. However, you do that and then, you know, you have the digestive tract in a dog, like 40 pound dog is like 13 feet. So you have quite a bit of distance to cover to really heal it all the way through. And this can take like, you know, to solidly get everywhere. It definitely takes like 10 days from start to finish. Um, so you definitely want to feed it consistently. Um, anyway, yeah. So, but yeah, the power of broth is just like that. It can heal those those holes in the gut lining, but it can also use these collagen fibroblasts to lay down um, healing for joints and tendons. And so that's why it's also really powerful for dogs that struggle with joint issues. Um, and beef is definitely going to have the biggest bones, and we're often using like knuckle bones in every single pot. They vary, so our broth thickness can vary too because we never have the same percentage. Of, of you know certain bone weight to this bone like some we use a complete mixture of bones so it does change a little bit and that's where the thickness can change too but beef has typically like the biggest bones and so you have a lot of release of of co collagen um pork also we use pork's a lot smaller but they also have pretty good um pretty good collagen um build up too and then lamb does also um and then your chicken and turkey are kind of a little bit different. There's a lot of tiny bones. So, you know, it does take quite a bit to get that thickness and to get that collagen release. But those bones are very, very full of cartilage and lots of good stuff in those little bones. And so that release is really great also. So chicken is actually, chicken and turkey are actually also really good for joint health um, because of their amounts of um, good, like, glucosamine chondroitin release and, like, great amounts of collagen also so um in general for gut health it's incredible it helps boost the immune system just because you are allowing the gut to heal reducing that inflammation and allowing there to be a good like microbiome it's a good you're creating a good environment for all those good and bad bacteria to kind of coexist to create a balance in the gut and um so the continuous use of it makes a huge difference Either. Okay, I, I, my, <laughs> okay it's like froze. I think my internet was just like buffering, so I mm. apologize. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I was like, did you? Yeah. Hear me? Well, and so I. Okay. <laughs> so, I uh, again, like when I'm working with a client or even with my own pets, my primary goal is to do as much as I can with food before I ever turn to supplements. And then, mm -hmm. and then maybe like on down the road, if if I need some sort of um, farm, uh, uh, some sort of like prescription drug intervention, that's that's another thing that we that's like way down the road. I'm I'm that you know those those uh, like memes that go around that are like if your if your doctor is um, prescribing you whatever medication without first ask, asking about diet and, and, you know, exercise lifestyle choices, they're, they're not a doctor, they're, they're your drug dealer. Right. And, um, yeah, the same thing I feel like is true for our, for our pets. And, oh my gosh, so, so there's, crazy. there's certainly, I know, right. Like there's, <laughs> there's a time and a place for prescription medica medications. I don't like, I'm not totally against it, yes, but absolutely. Um, yeah. But I want to do everything I possibly can with food first. And bone broth is just so, so functional. Like it, we haven't even talked about one of the primary uses, I, I think, for bone broth in most animals, at least in the United States or, you know, any first world countries who primarily feed 
a, you know, a dry diet to their pets is hydration. Hydration. Yep. Because <laughs> that, I mean, like we, mm-hmm. we, we do as humans, but our animals are living in this like chronic state of dehydration and it's really damaging over time to their organs. And yeah. I mean, just the overall functioning of their, their body. Like we, we mm-hmm. know that we're like, we're primarily made up of water. They are too. And if we're not giving them yeah. proper hydration. So <laughs> that's one of the like most fundamental things I think that we can use bone broth for. <laughs> Yeah. It's just getting the hydration into our pets. That's yeah. totally fine. This is yeah. this is a pet podcast. We're used to it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second time. I don't even know. The, most of the time, they don't even know what they're barking at. Hey, no, come here. One's in here and all three are out there on the couch. But yeah, I, I used to feed dry food like a long time ago, um, back in the day, and I mean, I'm just gonna admit it. Like I said, pedigree to my pup when she was, when I first found her because I did not know I was a college student, and it was. Um, let me just deal with them. But yeah, so the hydration aspect of everything is like so vital, and that was honestly how the broth was, how that idea came about because I saw the importance of pet parents hydrating their dry food that they were feeding to their dogs and how much that alone just completely changed their skin like not even changing the food just changing how they hydrate and that they hydrate the food with water and uh, made a huge difference and to me it's just like i always use the example of like what if you ate saltine every single day just the the dryness in your mouth that is their body every single day and you know once like once it shows up and that happens to the dog you can see it in the skin because it, the body will just like pull water and from the outside in pretty much to try to hydrate that food and to process that food and i think i mean i think a lot of people know this like four cups of dry food would need a whole gallon of water to properly be digested I barely can drink a gallon of water in a day. It's very hard for me. I have to make it like a project that I drink that gallon. And I, you know, compared to my dogs, I weigh a lot more than them. And I have a hard time. There's no way your dog is going to go drink a gallon of water. It's just not going to happen. So even if they drink a lot of water, oftentimes I pet parents say like, well, my dog drinks a ton of water. It's like, yeah, but they will never drink enough water, first of all, to replenish what they need in their body. But also food water and drinking water is not the same thing. The water molecules need to be attached or the you know moisture molecules need to be attached to the food in order to be properly digested and broken down. And um, if the dry food is just being consumed like that, it's not there's not enough there to properly break that down and pass it through the cell membrane. So um but yeah that's how the broth how my whole broth thing started and how i was like you know what but we can do this we can do one up here we can hydrate with very healing bone broth but also add the herbs in for proper detoxing in the body and moving things out and um you know our dogs are exposed to so many toxins in our environment and that's a whole nother thing of cleaning products and all these other things that our dogs are exposed to where bone broth comes in so handy because it's loaded with glycine, which is, you know, the number one detoxer of the liver. So it's like an all around, honestly, like an all around just helper in the body. You're getting the hydration, you're getting the gut healing, you're getting the detoxing. And then with our um, time infusion, also you're getting some antiseptic properties that really help with bacterial load. Like you're getting this all around thing, like a superfood um healer that can just really promote you know um a better functioning body yeah well and that's kind of the whole point um and i know one of the things i talk to all of my clients about is not fixing the problem but Mm -hmm. getting the body into a state where it can do what it is designed to do which is to heal itself So when we Mm -hmm. can use 
these functional foods like bone broth to to aid in that i just I, it's 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 like there's no downside to me <laughs> yeah no it's, it's just there's one not. of the you know most wonderful, one of the most wonderful things we can do for our pets my dog is going nuts i'm so sorry um there's she's like a baby under booming and she's like well she's sweet not breathing, girl. She's like shaking and trembling Aww. um I apologize. That's why I keep like looking down. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's not even hello. My dogs are like having a freak out at my employee to just walk in to go work. It's all good. They're crazy. Okay. So, all right. Now tell me um, a little bit about the product offerings you have. And you just said you use mm-hmm. thyme. Is that the, mm-hmm. the primary herb that you use? Do you use different herbs and different um like combination with different proteins or how do you do that? Yeah. So our primary, our herbs are, so our, our ingredient panel, besides the mushroom, we do a mushroom broth. Um, all of them are infused with the same herbs. Um, it's parsley, dandelion, and thyme. Dandelion being the most, like quantity wise, the most uh, used in the, in each batch. Um, and so those are our three herbs that we use, and I pick those specifically for their function in the body, for the keeping in mind that the body is exposed to all kinds of chemicals outside, inside. You know, most people still this to this day clean with extremely toxic um, floor cleaners, counter cleaners. We spray Febreze, like literally the ad on Hulu is Febreze with a dog, and you spray it all across the couch, and you know it, we don't we just that's just something that is not known and um it's so vital to our pet's health and so i mean that's the, probably a whole nother uh, podcast episode but um so i wanted something that helps um our dogs detox their body and um so that's where those herbs came in so dandelion is like nature's antihistamine and nature's like detoxer And so we infuse that into there and that really helps break histamine down in the liver. And then we are using parsley, which is a blood filter. So it helps detox the blood. And then we have thyme, which um, weighs the least, but they're all kind of similar quantities. Um, And that just kind of also acts as a natural and or, you know, um, diuretic to help move toxins out of the body. So they all work very well together and they all have their own little jobs, but they all essentially eliminate toxins out of the body which is extremely important and because i mean my dogs eat you know they eat viva raw and we um we do the most we have all kinds of supplements that we try to add and of course they get bone broth every single day um but still i know that they are exposed to all kinds of stuff um in our environment so um so yeah so those are the herbs that we use and then we use just uh, we use water and then we have organic apple cider vinegar which you know, this is also like kind of a controversial topic. Sometimes people talk about when it comes to yeast and things like that. I personally don't have that experience where it potentially makes yeast build up worse. I actually believe the opposite, but I know that that's like a debate that stands in the room and everybody has their own kind of perspective about it. Same with the, you know, histamine content and bone broth. It's kind of like a split belief. Um, but we actually use that apple cider vinegar for pH purposes, but we also, um, it also has its own benefits on the body and it also helps draw minerals out of plants, which are then exposed in the broth, which are then usable by the dog's body. So, um, so it's a kind of a benefit all around and it also helps draw, it's the acidity that helps draw the collagen and, um, the glycine and those benefits out of the bones. So, um. So it kind of works as that power. And then, of course, we have our different proteins. So right now we have seven different broths available. And I like call the herb-infused ones the dailies. There's six of them. Um, We just launched Rabbit in December, which is the only broth on the market that is Rabbit, which I'm very excited about. That was like my number one goal (laughs) the first. Um, And that one actually is not locally sourced. Um, We get that from South Carolina. They're pasture-raised rabbits, and um, they get shipped to me. And, um, and that one's been a really good hit. And I love that one because it's, it's a cooling protein and people are always looking for that. They're looking for those novel cooling proteins that can, you know, really help like reduce inflammation in the body. And, um, 
and also be like a really good usable source of protein and amino acids. So, so that one I'm really excited about. And then we have, we started with beef uh, and then we, I think we launched pork after that, chicken, turkey, rabbit, and then we have mushroom broth also. Lamb we also have, but lamb's kind of tough because lamb's really hard to source. It's very expensive to, um, to process lamb. And so we're having a really hard time with that. So it's kind of coming back here and there as I get bones available. So it's kind of a tough, a tougher situation. So if anybody listening to this goes on and was looking for a lamb broth, I'm sorry, if it's not available, stay tuned. It always does make a comeback, but it's a kind of a tough one um, to source. And it's also, I mean, people really like it and are looking for it. And some dogs only eat that. It is a hot protein and um, Mm -hmm. it can be more uh, inflammation encouraging, which is surprising to me because so many veterinarians always recommend like lamb and rice food to pets that are struggling with like GI issues. And I understand that it can be like a novel protein, but it's actually extremely um, heat creating. So to me, that would be a protein that I would steer away from if you have a dog with got inflammation or digestive issues, just because it can, you know, encourage that inflammation. So we don't want to do that. But, and then the other one that we have that's very different is the mushroom broth. And that one, we use all the fruit body mushrooms. There's no, like we don't use, they're not grown on, you know, they're not, we don't use any starches or anything that go in our broth. It's literally just the fruit body of the mushroom. We use shiitake mushroom, uh, lion's mane and oyster. And those again, were picked for their impeccable um, effect on the body. Shiitakes are just incredible immune boosting mushrooms. They activate killer T cells to try to tackle things in the body. And then lion's mane is probably my favorite, especially having two older dogs. Um, it's incredible at protecting the myelin sheath um, along the nerves. So it protects the casing that the nerves are in and um, is incredible for brain health, incredible for eye health. It just is great for cognitive health. So um, older dogs definitely benefit from that. And oyster mushrooms are just a general great mushroom too. They have lots of great um, vitamins and minerals and um, it's just kind of an all around immune boosting broth, I would say. And um, it's kind of the same with mushrooms. Like you'd want to feed them regularly and consistently because it helps keep the immune system up. And I read this thing that actually referenced it. Like it's like working out a muscle, like same with the immune system. You would want to continuously provide this source so that the immune system can continue to be strong. And so same thing, like I would recommend to feed that on a regular basis, at least a few times a week. FedEx, that's why they're having a free. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so say um, mushrooms are, are an incredible source of um, like immune health. Like they're absolutely powerful. And we, we simmer them for 48 hours. Um, at, like, anywhere from between 140 they started like 140 degrees and then we go up and we bottle it like between 180 and 210 and so they're they have tons of time to really release that cell membrane and that membrane that's around them oh these dogs this always happens when you're like in the middle of something like this they always have to act a fool right when you have something to do yes um, i know <laughs> but um but yeah, so the mushrooms simmer for, you know, 48 hours and it really releases all the healing power inside of them into the broth. And um, we actually have a, like, we bottle it and we strain everything, but there's always just a little bit of bits that come through. So there's like a little bit of mushroom bits that go into the broth, which is actually really good for you. So, um, so yeah, so those are the three mushrooms. And then there's no vinegar in that one, um, but we use carrots, celery, garlic, um, which is also controversial but absolutely powerful at detoxing the blood and like encouraging the circulatory system to do what it's supposed to be doing and then we use seaweed also which is a great source of iodine and just powerhouse um and um that actually grows also wild on nets and um so everything that we do we just try to find the best possible thing to make sure that nothing you know can, can harm your pets so the mushroom one, people ask me about cats, if pet cats can have it. My cats, some like it, some don't. Um, there is a little, you know, the garlic is not a lot. It's not overpowering, but there's a little bit of garlic in there. So I always tell people, um, you know, it's something that you kind of just need to do at a very minimum um, with your cats. But my cats, a couple of them like it, a couple of them do not like it at all. 
So, uh, but yeah, so we're just kind of all around. Uh, oh, and then that mushroom broth also had thyme and spices. So no dandelion in that one. Um, just because there's just like so much going on already with um, with the healing power of that broth. So, but yeah, those are our seven broths. And um, we'll see what's coming next. I'm not really sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't, maybe you'll, you'll get back around to that raw food thing. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. My gosh, that seems like such a, like, and back in the day when I thought about that, you know, there wasn't anybody like Viva. Viva does it. I know there's a like controversy with them right now. And, you know, I hate all of the things that are going on for all parties involved, but they do it yeah. right. You know, they source. Yeah. Their sourcing is incredible. And so it's like, why do it? They do an amazing job. <laughs> like, just let them do it. You know, we're going to, and I want to be a company that like focuses on what we do and our thing is broth and um, everything that we will put out will be broth centered. There will not be, you know, I just have my hands full enough that I can't even imagine having to do something else. So I, I really enjoy it and we'll see how we, with growing, how we're able to continue to, um, source it the way that we do from you know the small farms i think we'll always do that for some, to some level but i think also it'll be really hard um but you know whatever it is we'll try to figure it out and and find the best the best people to to provide us with their stuff so yeah well i mean i i appreciate having um someone like so hyper focused on doing what they do really really well and I think for a long time, I mean, there, even today, I can only count on one hand the number of companies that, at least that I think are doing bone broth well for mm -hmm. pets. It's, you know, I can't even fill up one hand. So, <laughs> um, you know, oh like a God. lot of people want to make it themselves and that's, that's a lot of people want to make it themselves and that's wonderful. But again, going back to the sourcing um, of the ingredients that you're using. So I, I tend to buy it. I don't tend to make it. I tend to buy it because I have just a couple of companies that I trust to do it really, really well. Yeah. <laughs> I can see on your face. You're like, <laughs> why? I'm mortified. Hopefully you can cut all of this out. <laughs> It's okay. There's literally I, nobody I out there. I hope you can cut this out because this is obnoxious, culprit. Okay. This is Amiga. Hey, Can you just send everybody off? Yeah, she does not like like Postman, and FedEx, and UPS. Hmm. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think. It's just, I don't know. I just don't even know, like, how people do it differently. That's what I think is so strange to me. Like, how do you not care about what you do? Like, I just don't, I don't know. Sometimes I just don't understand certain brands and how they're, like, they're, the way that they're shifting and how they source and, and what ingredients they use. And it just is, like, it's interesting, but I think that's where like the shift is happening in the pet industry still. Um, you know, it started a little bit of a go, but I feel like we're kind of like in a, in a peak going up with people really realizing how important it is to properly source and to properly find the companies that really care. And so much education going on on social media and so many people really putting in the effort to put the word out there. And I think that's, um, that's what's allowing companies like us to, you know, be successful and to reach more bowls and to, and change the way pets eat more. And I, that's in the end, all that we can hope for, you know, is that just that we can try to reach more pet parents to just try even just adding water to the bowl. I don't even care. Like don't buy broth, but at least give your dog water when they eat kibble because it makes a huge difference. And I thought you were that cold quick. <laughs> and um, so I just think that, um, yeah, education is definitely really important. And 
we want to try to be better at that on our social media. It's so hard for me to, you know, I balance all of the things. Like I have two employees now, which, um, which is awesome. One just one of my girls labels everything, and then the other girl bottles everything, and um, and they're awesome. And I couldn't do this <laughs> because we're definitely we're we're really moving a lot of broth right now. But you know, the goal is to always move more and to always reach more pet parents that want to make a difference and and the ones that don't know and it's still so fascinating to me because we are so in this world right? we we live yeah. this content every day we live uh, the food every day we are this is what we do so to us it's like how does nobody know about this but there's millions of people that have never even thought that their kibbles and bits is causing problems with their pets and now more than ever we have so many toxins in our environment you know people say like oh my gosh my dog lived 17 years on Purina like back in you know the 90s and I'm like yeah but you know what we also didn't have the overbreeding that we have now like the genetic damage to our pets we didn't have that much of that we didn't have as many toxins in our environment as we do today and there's just also, dogs used to move a lot more than they do today. And there's so many things that have changed that it just takes something different now to try to keep your pet around. Hello. Until, you know, for years and years to come. So I just think that it's, yeah, the education is where it's at. And that's what, you know, um, just helps us be able to do what we love. And uh, people taking a chance because you know you never know um, with marketing these days anymore you never know but um, I think yeah you just got to find your tribe and people who appreciate that and um, and just keep going <laughs> yeah absolutely um, and it is it is so important to keep putting more and more education out to hopefully reach more and more pet parents um, because it, it it does it always amazes me when I, I'm I, I start talking to somebody like outside of this world and mm -hmm. they're, I, I'm like how how do you not know? <laughs> how yeah, do you not I know. Know? I don't know. It, it's it's amazing to me, but it, it's it's always shocking. Um, and it shouldn't be you because ever it happens all the time. To, but like, it's just always shocking. I know. I want to like be the person who like stands in a like grocery shop like pet aisle and just stands there all day and is like okay so let me tell you about this <laughs> um let me tell you why you yeah. don't want to buy that uh, or let me tell you what's better or which one is right. the best one to pick like that's what i want like i know have all oh of my God. like somebody's like looking at the friskies and i'm like <laughs> is it rude if i'm like um don't buy that <laughs> uh, so it's oh, just oh like God. yeah I would love that would be so fun to do like a series on helping pet parents like at the grocery store. Yeah, that'd be a fun series. I'd getting get people to out, agree but... to that. that would... mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so where where can people find crude carnivore? So we do sell to quite a few stores across the country. We're always trying to grow that. So if there is a store that like is near you that doesn't carry us, we you can just please let me know. It does always help to get the customer to be like, can you please bring this product in? And um, yeah. we do love working with local stores. They do so much to educate um, educate their customers. And like, we don't have the time to educate all of those customers that they educate. Um, so it's just really important to us. So if there's a store near you and you like to shop independent, like just ask them. If you don't have that, then you can always find us on crudecarnivore.com. Um, we ship all over the country. And um, and then yeah, social media. We're crude carnivore on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we are on TikTok, but we don't really do much on there yet. So, um, but yeah, Instagram for sure is like kind of where it's at. I feel like that's where we po like post the most, and where um, like all the stores are to yeah, follow us. So. So. Yeah, I, I like Instagram for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's where we can be found. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for putting out such a wonderful product, for coming on and talking to people about it. And um, I don't know, maybe we can do some more deep dives later on on 
on bone broth and I mean we kind of went over the you know yeah. general this is really wonderful for your pet but um there is so much so much that could be talked about for the the benefits of bone broth so maybe we can do that one of these days but yeah, thank you so that. much for your time today and for talking to to my listeners and um just yeah make sure to go follow crude carnivore especially on instagram that's where i live too so <laughs> it's my favorite of the platform and um yeah try it out try it out try it and, and like she said even if you're feeding kibble or you have like friends family relatives that are feeding kibble even if you can get them to add water to it like that's the simplest thing to do add some water to it and just see like it, it's like step it's like baby steps with some people like oh mm -hmm. my gosh that was amazing what else can i do right so yeah thank you so much yeah absolutely and... thank you so much yeah for having me on this is awesome i i always like talking about it and getting all sciencey about stuff so uh, but yeah i'd love to do anything that you know if we want to ever talk about like household products or toxins or anything like that like i have completely shifted my entire life over to non-toxic and um it's you know i never really had an issue before but like i just feel good knowing that whatever i use on my floor on my counters and in my dishwasher and my laundry doesn't cause you know yeah. any issues with my pets or me so that's another whole a whole nother thing um but um would you want to give your um listeners a code yeah. to oh that would be give wonderful. them like a 20% yes. discount yeah yeah, I can create a discount um, with the code Pet Parenting Reset, Ooh. and they can get twenty percent off. I can do that today. I'll turn it on. Yay! That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Twenty percent off. That's it. So fun. Yeah. Pet Parenting Reset. I'm like, damn. Yeah. It's a long code, but I'm I'm one of the lucky, yeah I'm I'm one of the lucky ones that has a store near me that carries crude carnivore so <laughs> oh really what store is it um pupology okay cool that's awesome yeah sweet sweet yeah. so yep. awesome so um pet parenting reset 20 percent off guys go yep. get it um and i you have like sample or you at least used to i don't know do you still have sample yeah, I had like, Packages. so I had like the holiday kits. They're like 20, like five bottles okay. in like this little yeah. box. And they were like for Christmas only. And people love them. Oh. But yeah, I'll have, I think I'll, I'll have a few for Valentine's Day of just like beef because we are out of um, some of the other ones. But, and then I think we're going to change the size. I think we're going to go to up to a four ounce just because it's such tedious job to fill, fill all of them. And they're so labor intensive. So we're still going to have like sample bottles. And I think what we're yeah. going to do is actually sell them individually. Like people can create like a four pack of the the four ounces and that'll just be easier. So that's hopefully this year too. Um, and then we'll actually have those available at retail locations also for people to try and taunt people like the small bottles because the big ones you have to like freeze into ice cubes and all that stuff. So, so yeah. But yeah. Nice. Well, thank you so much. This well, was so well, fun. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training the furry family coach just go to the furry family coach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only seven dollars that's the furry family coach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only seven dollars i can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside